Hi, I am Yunfei from X, formerly called Google X, and we are the Everyday Robots Project, and I lead the simulation team there. Simulation is an invaluable tool to scale up robots learning, as it is a lot cheaper and faster to collect data with Guangzhou's information and provides large variations to the data. However, the model training sim doesn't transfer to the real robot directly because of the reality gap in both visual and dynamics domains. In this talk, I will give an overview of the sim to real technique space and focus on a series of GAN-based methods to solve sim to real in visual domain. The works I'm going to present today are done by a large group of people from our group and robotics at Google Research and DeepMind in the past three years. The team started with the question, how, how we can learn vision-based robot grasping with deep learning? You probably have heard of Arm Farm. The goal here is to learn grasping arbitrary objects using a molecular RGB camera over the shoulder. As you can see, we have 14 robots in total, and they run continuously to grasp object in the beam in front. And here we use self-supervised learning to learn a grasp success prediction model. And the model takes the image and a candidate gripper command as input and predicts how likely this grasp is going to be successful. And once we have this model, we use cross entropy method to search good actions. Following this work, the team developed a reinforcement learning based solution to further improve the grasp performance. Instead of optimizing for the next step with supervised learning as in the previous project, with RL, it can optimize for the long horizon. Particularly, we use deep Q learning. And the method we came up with is called QT opt. It is a distributed version of DQN with continuous action space. And compared to the previous supervised learning method, now the critic uses the learn Q function. And we showed significant progress in grasp success rates. So next question is, can we leverage simulation to reduce the amount of real world trials and the data collection time? So here are some numbers. In the previous project, we need 600,000 real robot grasps for training. And it took us three months to collect this amount of data on seven robots. Using simulation can collect the data much faster since it's easy to parallel. And the other benefit is that we have Guangzhou's. However, the model training sim doesn't transfer to the real robot directly because of the reality gap. The reality gap is the discrepancy of what can be achieved in sim and in the real world. And it is caused by many factors, such as dynamic model discrepancy, uncertain environment, and so on. The reality gap can be classified into visual domain and physics domain. Visual here means what the robot camera sees. And you can clearly see the visual look difference between the real robot camera image and the rendered camera image on the left. And the other category is the physics domain gap. For example, you can see on the right, the object dynamics is hard to simulate, especially if it is deformable like the cheap bag. And that also leads to grasping behavior difference. So we need to solve sim to real which is a problem of domain transfer from training in the virtual world to execution in the real world. So how do we solve the problem? In general, the sim to real transfer techniques in the visual domain are mainly in the following four categories. The first one is domain randomization to create a lot of variations in sim during training so that the real world can be thought as one variation during testing. And the second one is to use different object representation that can make sim to real transfer easier, such as using depths or point cloud. 
And the third one is feature level domain adaptation. This is to extract features from both same and real domains that are required by the task, but abstract away anything that is specific to a domain. And the fourth category is pixel level domain adaptation to transfer the image style. For example, we can convert the synthetic images to make them look more realistic. In this talk, I'm going to focus on the fourth one, which is pixel domain adaptation. And I will describe a line of research using GAN to solve same to real in the visual domain. First, let's review how GAN works. Generative adversarial networks is a exciting recent innovation in machine learning. GAN is a generative model, and it can create new data instances that resemble your training data. For example, GAN can create images that look like a photograph of human face, even though the faces don't belong to any real human. GANs achieve this level of realism by pairing a generator, which learns to produce the target output, with a discriminator, which learns to distinguish true data from the output of this generator. And the generator tries to fool the discriminator, while the discriminator tries to keep from being fooled. Now, in the same to real domain, let's say we have same image data and real image data as our training set. The goal is to train a generator, which is a neural network that can transfer the same images to the real world like images. And we call them transfer same images. If we can train this generator, then we can augment all the same data to produce transfer same data and use it for robot task training. And to train a generator, the generator output is connected directly to the discriminator input. And the discriminator learns to distinguish the generator's fake data from real data. The generator loss and discriminator loss is combined into gain loss. And through back propagation, the discriminator's classification provides a signal that the generator uses to update its weight. And the first technique I will introduce here to solve sim to real uses exactly this structure. And the name of the work is called Grasp Again, which was presented in ECRA 2018. In the video on the left are the rendered image sequences. And the video on the right is the output of the generator network and is used to train the grasping controller. As you can notice, the generator automatically adds many details, including robot wires, tree texture, and shadow. And in this way, the visual input is closer to the real world, and this helps to bridge the reality gap for perception. And here are more results for comparison. The first row is the synthetic image from the simulator, and the last row is the real world image. And note that we don't require to pair the data for training GAN in this work. And the middle row is the transfer same images with grasp again. And you can see visually, they look much closer to the last row compared to the raw same images. So how well does this work for robot grasping task? As you can see from this graph, with grasp again, we showed that it can achieve the same performance with only 2% of real world data. Basically, we were able to achieve 50x data reduction. And now here's a video showing uh, our setup and more results. So here is the raw SIM images, and here are the transfer SIM images. And you can see this side-by-side -side comparison between the raw same images and the transferred images.
And we use thousands of randomized shapes for training robot grasping in SIM. And we tested on hundreds of real world objects for grasping. Now, one problem with this previous project is that we still use real world data for training the image generator. So the next question is, can we just use SIM data to train the generator and essentially solve SIM to real through SIM to SIM? And the idea here is to train a real to SIM image translator to convert a real world image to a canonical version in SIM to bridge the gap. So the image translator is trained using paired simulation data. One is in canonical form, and the other is highly randomized. And you can see those representative images on the right. So here, the generator converts the randomized images to the canonical same image form. And the discriminator tries to discriminate whether the image is transferred or is canonical. And finally, when it is applied to the real world grasping, the real world image is fed into the generator to produce the adapted image that is close to the canonical form. And in this way, we can bridge the gap between real and sim. And now if we look back at the grasp again structure, and here the idea is to replace sim image input with randomized sim image and replace real world image input with canonical same image. And we train a generator that can convert the randomized same images to the canonical same images. And this idea leads to this new technique called ARCAN, which we presented in CVPR last year. And to stabilize training, besides GAN loss, we also use additional supervision, including how close the predicted segmentation mask and depths are to the ground truth ones. And here are some example results. The first row is the input to the generator, which are highly randomized. And the second row is the target ground truth image. And the third row is the output of the generator. You can see even though the input is very random, the output in the third row is very closely matching the ground truth in the second row. And the generator segmentation mask and depths are in the fourth and fifth rows. And they also look pretty good. More importantly, how well does it work for real world image? And you can see in the video here, the input is on the left and the generator one is in the middle. And you can see it works pretty well to convert the real world image to this canonical same image. And here are the results for the grasping task. And let's focus on the real world performance in this box. With domain randomization, it doesn't transfer well on the real robots and only achieved around 30% grasp success rate. But with Arcan, it can achieve 70% without seeing any real world data. And with fine tuning, with just domain randomization, it was able to achieve 85% grasp success rate. And with the grasp again, with the ARCAN compared to the original QT opt, it can achieve the similar success rate, but without using that 600,000 real world data. Basically, this helped us saving three months of data collection. Now let's revisit the basic GAN structure. Traditionally, training an image, image translation model requires a data set comprised of paired examples. And the requirement for a paired training data set has a lot of limitations. These data sets are challenging and expensive to prepare. And in many cases, the data sets are simply do not exist. So there is a desire for the technique to train an image to image translation system that doesn't require paired examples. And one successful approach for unpaired sim to image, image to image translation is called CycleGAN. So CycleGAN is the extension for the GAN architecture, which also involves the simultaneous training of two generator models and two discriminator models. 
So one generator takes images from the first domain as input and outputs images for the second domain. And the other generator takes images from the second domain as input and generate images for the first domain. And the discriminator models are then used to determine how plausible the generated images are and update the generator model accordingly. So let's focus on the branch starting with the same image. The first sim to real generator converts the same image to transfer sim image. And then the discriminator tries to discriminate this transfer sim image from the real image. But notice we have a second generator, which is a real to sim generator that convert the transfer sim image back to the second sim image. And we add a cycle consistency loss, which require the output of the second generator to match the original image. And this enforces the cycle consistency during GAN training and encourages the adapted image to retain 30 attributes of the input image since it must be reconstructed. So with CycleGAN, the goal here is to make the transfer sim image as realistic as possible. However, it doesn't guarantee that it's useful for the actual robot task. For example, for grasping, it may produce very realistic images, but in the process may also remove some of the objects from the image if they are not easily transformed to realistic versions. So how can we enforce the generated images to be useful for certain robot tasks? And the idea here is to add a RL sync consistency loss for image translation. It ensures that the Q value from the transfer sim image after the sim after the image translation can match the Q value associated with the original image. And this idea leads to this new work we presented earlier this year in CVPR called RL CycleGAN. And this work uses CycleGAN uh, as we just talked about. And on top of that, it also adds a task loss for matching the Q value to enforce the transfer image works for the grasping task. And to dive a little bit deeper, first, we introduce a RL scene consistency loss. So here, GANs are constrained such that the RL agents act consistently across adapted image and the original image. RL agents are trained jointly with GANs. And since the visual features for grasping simulation and reality may differ drastically, we train two different Q networks. So how well does it work? Uh, here we have a two robot setups. Uh, for the first robot setup on the left, RL cycle GAN is able to achieve 94% grasp success rate with only previously collected off-policy trials. And this is higher than the previous grasp GAN method. And for the second setup on the right, with only 80,000 real episodes, which is much less than all the all policy data we have, the model trained with RL cycle GAN reaches state of the art performance at 95% grasp success rate, which is much higher than the 33% from simply mixing same and real data. But one problem with RL CycleGAN is that to train the scan work network, we need RL label data. In other words, we need Q value associated with the image data. And this is especially expensive for real world image branch, where we need to run real robot grasping experiment to collect that data. And the other problem is that this scan is tightly integrated with RL, which prevents it being used in different task domains. And when image translation is performed, it can arbitrarily change the image and may remove useful information. So the question we have is, is there a way we can control the image translation, especially to preserve features that directly interact with robots like object structure and textures? Therefore, we want the generator to focus on objects by introducing an object detection consistency loss. 
And we use this for keep the object semantics and keep them stay consistent before and after sim to real adaption, adaptation. So we use a perception model called the retina net, which is trained on both sim and real world domains to make object prediction. And we encourage the generator to include, uh, to, to induce retina net to produce consistent predictions. And this consistency encourages the generator to preserve objects based on the relative output of a perception model before and after the domain transfer. So this idea leads to this new technique we came up with, and we call it retina again. It demonstrates strong simple transfer results with object semantic awareness and also task agnosticity. And we show that an object detector trained on generic robot data can create a strong object detection consistency loss. And when this loss is combined with cyclogen pipeline, it can achieve successful transfer in multiple task domains. For example, we can use the same object detector uh, and the retina again works in both the door opening task with imitation learning and object grasping task using RL. And these two tasks have very drastically different environments, as you can tell from the results on the right. And compared to the prior methods, Retina again emphasizes generalizability and demonstrated high task success rate. And this work is currently in submission. So to summarize, we need to solve sim to real which is the problem of domain transfer from training the virtual world to execution in the real world. And the ideas we talk about today is sim to real is critical to enable large scale machine learning. And the problem can be divided into visual and physics domains. And in visual domain, there are four main sim to real technique categories. They are domain randomization using different visual representations, feature level domain adaptation, and pixel level domain adaptation. And in this talk, we focus on the last category and introduce a series of GAN works to solve sim for real. And we show that with GAN, we can adapt simulation image to be more realistic. But note that sim to real is a very large space, and it is still an open problem in the robotics community. And here I listed some keywords and technique that worth looking into in the future. For example, Today we talk about sim to real in the visual domain, and we need more advance in sim to real in the physics space. And we also need to solve real to sim. And at the same time, we also need to uh, come up with technique that can work in diverse tasks and environments. And here are the papers uh, we published for these projects that I presented today. And here are the people who were involved in those projects. The works are done by a large group of people across X, Everyday Robot Projects, Google Brain, and DeepMind. And finally, thanks for your attention. And be sure to check out our Everyday Robots Project website. And thank you.